So, we have been looking at uh, convergence behavior of numerical schemes for solving ODE initial value problems and we graduated from scalar case to the vector case. We have looked at now general uh, linear differential equations, multidimensional linear differential equations and analyzed stability of some of the uh, well known integration methods. Particularly we looked at uh, we looked at explicit Euler, implicit Euler and then so the way to go about of course uh, is to use at least to get an insight is to use diagonalization and we have considered a special case where dx by dt is equal to a x A is a diagonalizable matrix and A can be written as psi lambda psi inverse and lambda lambda is a matrix which has lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n where lambda i correspond to ith ith eigenvalue of a and psi corresponds to eigenvector matrix. Psi corresponds to the eigenvector matrix. So, that is columns are eigenvectors of a okay. and then using this diagonalizable matrices we actually got some insight into how uh, different methods behave. Uh, see for example, if I uh, write down the equation for trapezoidal rule, then trapezoidal rule is x n plus 1 is equal to x n plus h by 2 f n plus 1 and for linear multivariable system it turns out to be for linear multivariable system it turns out to be this difference equation and then we defined uh, E n that is difference between x star n minus x n where x star n is the true solution x star n is the true solution. Let me just uh, move back uh, and the state here the true solution. The true solution is uh, x n plus 1 star is equal to e to the power a h x star n. This is the true solution and then we want to find out the difference between the true and the approximate. The approximate solution for by trapezoidal rule is given by this particular matrix, this particular uh, matrix difference equation and then if we want to look at uh, E n plus 1 x star n plus 1 then you get this uh, 
matrix difference equation this particular matrix into this matrix into this vector ok. So, this is this is the difference equation which we should evolve we had made one more assumption we had made two assumption a is diagonalizable the other assumption we had made was real part of all eigenvalues of A is strictly less than 0. So, we have assumed that real part of lambda i is strictly less than 0. If real part of lambda i is strictly less than 0, then x star goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Okay? So, we are looking at a stable multivariable system all eigenvalues are on the left half plane. Okay? and uh, because of that x star goes to 0 uh, our focus is in understanding how this particular equation behaves the this part of the equation that is this matrix eigenvalues of this particular matrix block matrix this is a block matrix this is a matrix this is a matrix this is a matrix this is null matrix so this is a block matrix and what we want is all eigenvalues of this matrix should be inside unit circle in order that the approximation error asymptotically goes to 0. Okay. So, for this to happen we have to do this uh, jugglery we have to look at uh, this matrix i minus h by 2 a inverse i plus h by 2 okay. and then I am going to use the same trick psi psi inverse h by 2 psi lambda psi inverse inverse psi psi inverse plus h by 2 psi ok. This can be written as so uh, psi is equal to i minus h by 2 lambda inverse i plus h by 2 lambda into psi inverse. Okay. This is a diagonal matrix, this is a diagonal matrix because lambda is a diagonal matrix, i is a diagonal matrix, i plus h by 2 lambda is a diagonal matrix and this is a diagonal matrix. So, with this, this particular matrix any element of this matrix uh, the diagonal element of this matrix will be of the form 1 plus h by 2 lambda i divided by 1 minus h by 2 lambda i that will be the element of this matrix diagonal element of this matrix and then we want this to be strictly less than 1 for all i. Okay? We want this to be strictly less than 1 for all i. So, that is the stability characteristic that is the convergence uh, characteristics we we call this method to be asymptotically stable or a stable provided uh, all the eigenvalues are all these eigen these are eigenvalues of this this matrix uh, i plus i minus h by 2 a inverse into i plus h by 2 a. So, all these eigenvalues should be inside unit circle you can show that if real part of each eigenvalue is negative then this condition is satisfied that is all the eigenvalues are always inside unit circle. Okay. So, trapezoidal rule will or implicit Euler are a stable okay, uh, 
you will get uh, solutions which are converging to the true solutions. So, these methods are better than explicit Euler or uh, similar some other explicit methods, so it is a say second order Runge-Gutta method. So, the stability characteristics of these. So, one can actually draw what are called as stability envelopes of different methods uh, and you can see that uh, the stability depends upon two things, one is eigenvalues and other is H, how do you choose H. Okay? And the way you choose H is you apply this condition, uh, such, such conditions for all eigenvalues and choose most conservative H, smallest H. What I mean is most conservative is smallest H. Okay? That satisfies. Uh, so, there are certain uh, general conclusions that have been drawn uh, which compare different methods. So, see there are plethora of methods, there are so many methods. So, which one to use? So, uh, as I said you will develop uh, preferences when you start actually using them. Some of you might use Gears method, some of you might use Runge Kutta method uh, and we know how to make it work, but to make it work you should know all this theory. Otherwise, it is hard to make it work. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, implicit Euler and Crank Nicholson method are asymptotically stable or astable, but uh, higher order methods have uh, predictor character, predictor methods have restricted regions of stability. So, uh, Crank Nicholson and implicit Euler are uh, nice uh, methods in terms of stability, but as you move on to higher order okay, predictor character methods, the region of stability shrinks, accuracy improves. Okay. A higher order predictor character method will have better accuracy, but a smaller region of. Uh, so, so, when you move to the higher order uh, or, uh, or multi-step method, multi higher order in terms of polynomial approximation, multi-step method. Uh, the stability region actually shrinks. So, accuracy improves, stability sh shrinks. So, one has to choose H very, very carefully if you want better accuracy. Okay. So, uh, there is a trade off and you have to understand this when you then things like uh, explicit Tange Gutta methods have better region of stability or larger region of stability than explicit Euler. So, in some sense, uh, explicit Euler you can say is. Uh, you know very vulnerable to mistakes. You make small mistake in choice of H, uh, explicit either can give you, but then if you see engineering literature, there are some uh, people will still use explicit Euler. Okay. Uh, they will choose integration step size very very small and make it work. So, it is not that you cannot make explicit Euler work. Okay. You have to understand how, how to make it work. So, with Runge Gutta you might be able to take larger steps, with explicit other you probably have to take many many small steps. Now, and there are situations where you have to use explicit other. Okay. For example, um, right now one of my student uh, in systems and control, uh, PhD student is working on, uh, we are working on some algorithms for uh, um, control of a motor. Okay. Now, we have to do online integration. Okay, in milliseconds. Okay, because the motor is fast, right? And you want to do you want to do some mathematical model calculations online in the microprocessor um, in fractions of a second. I cannot do iterative calculations. I cannot afford to do iterative calculations. I have to do very very fast in computing. We still don't have computers or microprocessors even with so much this thing which can you know do uh, implicit method implementation in fraction of a second, okay, because there are floating point calculations. So, the simplest method that you can implement is explicit Euler and if you choose integration step size very, very small it works. Okay. We want to use, mind you, I am trying to use a model for a motor which is a set of five differential equations. I want to solve them online on a chip okay. and this, this is where I uh, have to use explicit Euler because that is simplest 
in terms of computations okay so i have to make it work rather than trying to go for a more complex method where uh, you know conversions see conversions may occur if you are using iterative calculations implicit methods for uh, some steps uh, conversions may occur but for some one particular step suppose it gets stuck what do you do okay so i am trying to control my motor using a model and then if suddenly my calculations get stuck i have a problem so i have to use a method which is guaranteed to give me next value that is so which method you use when is something which is you know there is no formula for that you have to uh, develop uh, expertise uh, and sometimes you have to use expert knowledge sometimes you have to use uh, predictor character sometimes you have to use range kutta depending upon sometimes uh, you have to use uh, collocation so it depends upon the situation upon the problem at hand upon the solvers that you have kind of uh, computing power that you have limitations that you have so it's a function of many things there is no one prescription so don't think that uh, after doing all this well i'll never use implicit explicit euler you'll use explicit euler in some situations okay and you should know how to make it work now there is one uh, concept which i want to state here before i uh, do one one more small uh, application of od ivp differential algebraic solvers probably i'll give a introduction in the next class if there is a time we'll start today or so as i said there is much more to the stability analysis uh, and you should be aware of these aspects when you compare different methods they are very very useful for comparing different uh, methods of solving initial value problems okay one last thing which will connect one last thing which will connect to uh, dae solvers is this concept of stiffness of od okay stiffness of od now stiffness is a concept that is related to the eigen values of uh local jacobian if it is a nonlinear system or if it is a linear system it's related to relative eigen values that is the largest eigen value and the smallest eigen value okay uh, i'll just talk about this through a, a, an example i'm going to use this particular example d by dt y1 y2 simple problem uh x you know dy1 by dt and dy2 by dt is equal to given by this matrix differential equation two variables okay now this problem can be solved analytically so the analytical solution the analytical solution of this particular problem is y1 t well we have we have uh, seen how to compute analytical solution it's e to the power at into y not okay so this will be e to the power at y0 which is nothing but if you do this calculations of e to the power at it will be 2 e to the power minus 100 t and now 
this is 1 not 3 by 99 e to the power minus t and so this is the solution this is y this is y1 t and this is y2 t okay now suppose i wanted to solve this problem using some numerical integration okay some numerical integration what will it depend upon the choice of h will depend upon what are lambda 1 lambda 2 what are the eigen values here the eigen values here lambda 1 is minus 100 and lambda 2 is equal to minus 1 right now suppose suppose i am using explicit euler okay then you know the condition right 1 minus 100 h less than 0 uh, strictly inside unit circle or strictly less than 1 1 minus h right there are two conditions one is this condition other is this condition if i were using explicit euler this is this is this is for making sure that explicit euler does not blow up okay but if you want accurate solution just look at the relative time scales what is happening here is that y1 t okay is decaying 100 times faster than y2 t because y2 t has this plus this this term is going to is going to decay very very slowly e to the power minus t decays much much slower than e to the power minus 100 t okay so if you want to capture the behavior of e to the power minus 100 t you should choose integration step size to be very small if you don't choose very small okay you will miss out you will miss out on this dynamics okay but this if you choose it based on minus 100 t okay you have to do too many steps of integration okay so your computation increases okay but nevertheless you are forced to look at this eigenvalue when you choose integration step size otherwise you will miss out what is happening for y1 okay you will be able to only capture y2 correctly okay so if you look at uh, the way this is i mean if you plot y1 and y2 versus t one will decay like this and the other will decay like this okay so if you want to capture this you better you better choose small step sizes okay but you know this one is very very slow and unfortunately these kind of effects are very very common in chemical engineering systems pressure dynamics i mean this is a representative uh, hypothetical two differential equations look at real distillation column in the distillation column dynamics of temperature on a tray or dynamics of composition liquid composition okay is very very slow compared to dynamics of pressure and vapor compositions okay dynamics of pressure pressure changes very fast okay across the column but the liquid composition on the tray changes very very slowly if you want to write a differential equation that governs the pressure dynamics okay pressure dynamics we normally make an assumption that pressure is constant when you do design actually pressure is not constant that's a simplifying assumption pressure is varying inside a distillation column otherwise there will not be a flow right the vapor has to flow from bottom to top so there is a pressure gradient pressure transients are extremely fast concentration transients are extremely i mean on the relative scale concentration transients are something like e to the power minus t pressure transients are e to the power minus 100 t very very fast if you want to capture pressure transients you have to choose integration step size to be very small okay maybe 0.1 second but concentration change on a tray might take you know 50 minutes okay so one is very slow one is very fast and then if you insist that you want the dynamics of pressure to be captured you have to choose integration step size 
with reference to the transient of the pressure and not transient of the concentration. Okay. Such systems are called as stiff systems. Okay. So, the way to mathematically quantify stiffness is through eigenvalues or local eigenvalues. You linearize, find the Jacobian, find the local eigenvalues and you define something called a stiffness ratio. Okay. So, here is just, just a quantification of the time scales before I move to stiffness ratio, you know. For this particular system, y1 t will become less than 0 0.01 times y0 when t is greater than 0 0.03 in a very short time in a very short time okay y1 t will reduce to one hundredth of its original value okay whereas same thing to happen for So, y1 t comes to one hundredth of its original value in just 0 0.03 seconds whereas or 0 0.03 hours whatever whatever time unit you want to take whereas y2 t comes to one hundredth of its value in 4.65 hours or 4.65 units minutes or seconds or whatever you want to take. Okay. So, you can see one is a fast mode and one is a slow mode such systems where some modes are very fast, some modes are very slow are called as stiff systems and then you have to use what are called as stiff solvers. Okay. Well, one, one uh, now in, in non-linear systems there is one more difficulty the stiffness eigenvalues can change because it is local Jacobian okay. and eigenvalues can change as you move, move in the state space. Okay. So, in some region of the state space system can be highly stiff, in some region it can be less stiff. So, well best method is uh, to use variable step size integration if you can afford to do it. I gave you an example of electrical motor where I cannot afford to use a variable step size you know my calculations will go berserk if I use variable step size. So, uh, if you can use variable step size if you do not know if you have a luxury of using variable step size and if you do not know anything about the stiffness that will solve your problem to a large extent, but uh, sometimes you are forced to use fixed step size and then you have to worry about uh, the relative time scales. So, how do you quantify this? Okay. So, we call this as stiffness ratio and stiffness ratio is defined as mod of real part of lambda i a max mod of real part of well the eigen values when when you find out they can be complex ok. So, you only look at the real part the complex part typically gives if you look at the solution of uh, exact solution of a linear uh, ordinary differential equation then probably you remember from your course on control that you have uh, roots of the characteristic polynomial have real part and complex part. Okay. The complex part gives rise to sinusoidal bounded behavior the real part actually decides the rate of convergence. Okay. So, we only look at the real part the maximum magnitude real part by minimum magnitude real part this ratio is called a stiffness ratio. If this ratio is large typically greater than 10, 20 then you have a problem ok 100 is very bad yeah. If you have a step change in now, h values then moment it decays is not significant. So, that is variable step size right you cannot have step change in h value, but you can have variable step size implementation 
if you can afford to. So, if the system is stiff, one way is use variable step size with tight accuracy, accuracy monitoring. That will that will uh, you know take off your worry about the stiffness. It's completely not possible to wait for step size, but it's definitely in nature is possible. So keep it very small, and once one time it's not possible, then you can uh, yeah. So one has to. Uh, built in some super intelligence which looks at you know if one value is not changing you can start uh, increasing the so if y1 has decreased okay already decreased and gone to zero then for y2 you can increase the step size but then you will have to have some you know um, if then else rule base or something like that which is which is which you know a priori which you know a priori that now pressure has stabilized okay now let me look at but for a complex plant Okay, it is not always possible. For some simple system with two, three variables, you might be able to do what you are saying. Okay, but for a chemical plant simulation, that is difficult. Okay, but then you should know about the stiffness part, and then you know decide upon how to implement your scheme. And then, of course, uh, the stiffness ratio in this particular case, there is a constant A matrix. If you have a nonlinear differential equation, then you locally linearize and then look at uh, Jacobian. So, if you have if you are if you are solving uh, equation here of type dx by dt is equal to f of x, x belongs to R n, and you are at x. T n is equal to x n, then well we of course look at do f by do x at x equal to x n. We look at this Jacobian eigenvalues of this Jacobian. Will tell you local local stiffness. You cannot define a global stiffness. It will be a local stiffness, and uh, eigenvalues of this matrix can change as x changes. Okay, so. Um, in in the situation where you don't do not know anything, and you have luxury to implement uh, variable step size, that is a better option. Okay. Now before we move to uh, differential algebraic systems, so one way is you know uh, one way to deal with the situation is to say that well I am not really interested in the dynamics of the slower variable. Okay, I could argue that well, pressure, you know, transient. If it hap happens in seconds, I am not so much concerned. I am just worried about the steady state pressure behavior. Okay, uh, and uh, I want to, I want to only study the dynamics of the slow, slow system. Okay, so one way, see, I have this differential equation. I will go back to the simpler differential equation. We let us say we have this differential equation d x 1 by d t is equal to some alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 1 2 x 2 and d x 2 by d t is equal to alpha 2 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 2 x 2. This is my differential equation. I know from the physics of the problem that d x 1 by d t is a fast mode and x 2 by d t is a slow mode. Okay. I can decide to approximate make a pseudo steady state approximation that this is equal to 0. Okay. Now, now there is a trouble because this is fine you can do this approximation I do not want to worry about pressure transients. I am mainly concerned about concentration transients in the distillation column. Okay, moment you make this approximation, this is no longer an ODE initial value problem. This is a differential algebraic system. Okay, now here you might say, well, that's not so difficult. You know, you just eliminate x1, right? X1 in terms of x2, and you have only one differential equation. Okay, this is true. It's easy to solve when this is a linear differential equation. These coefficients are nice, and you can solve. What if I say, well, this is not the case, but it is some 
some g of x1 x2 is equal to 0 okay likely to be the case in a chemical engineering system some nonlinear function of uh, this kind of algebraic constraints in chemical engineering systems arise because of ther uh, thermodynamic equilibrium concentration between or concentration of vapor phase and liquid phase are you know at thermodynamic equilibrium actually thermodynamic when you say that at thermodynamic equilibrium that is a simplification there is a transient when the concentration on the uh, you know plate changes there is some transient between uh, you know that concentration and the concentration of the vapor phase but we make an assumption that it is instantaneously vapor phase composition comes to an equilibrium it doesn't happen instantaneously we are only making a simplification we are making an approximation okay because those time scales we are not so much concerned about those time scales we assume that almost instantaneous there is for modeling purpose in reality it is not going to happen there will be some time lag small time lag we are willing to forego that time lag okay so you will get these kind of equations differential algebraic equations so uh, differential algebraic equations of course belong to many times the stiff equations and then you need different solvers different class of solvers to to handle this kind of a problem we'll have a very very brief look at these methods how to handle this anyway before i move to that so before we start talking about differential algebraic systems i want to talk about one application of ode solving in a in a different context uh, ode initial value problem i have a solver for ode, ODE initial value problem okay and i want to use this solver to solve a boundary value problem okay i want to solve a boundary value problem now what is the difference between boundary value problem and initial value problem initial value problem only at initial point the conditions are specified and then you can go marching okay boundary value problem part of the conditions are specified at one boundary part of the conditions are specified at the other boundary okay suppose you have two differential equations you need two conditions one condition might be specified at one boundary one condition might be specified by the other boundary okay you so now if you want to use marching algorithms you have to do some some more tricks these class of methods are called as shooting methods okay now again uh, i'm not going to go too much deep into this i just want to give you an introduction so there are uh, methods called single shooting there are methods called multiple shooting i'm going to discuss only about the single shooting method okay just to give you idea of what is shooting method let's go back to uh, our uh, good old problem of tubular reactor with axial mixing okay and then with that help of that example i'll show how i can use an ode initial value problem solver to deal with a boundary value problem okay now this is my uh, tram problem 1 by pe and by now you are very very familiar with this problem you have solved this problem by multiple methods so inside the domain 0 to 1 this is the differential equation which should hold second order differential equation and at the boundaries you have dc by dz is equal to pe c minus 1 at z is equal to 0 and dc by dz is equal to 0 at z is equal to 1 a second order differential equation needs two conditions okay one condition is at one boundary the other condition at the other boundary 
Okay. Now, if I say that z equal to 0 is the initial point, okay, then to start using marching, I need two values in the beginning. Let us see how why we need two values in the beginning. Before that, I am going to just transform this problem. Okay. I am going to define x1 is equal to c and x2 is equal to dc by dz. Okay. This will give me two differential equations. One is dx1 by dz is equal to x2. Okay. And then this differential equation I can write as 1 by P e d x 2 by d z right d 2 c by d z square is d x 2 by d z okay. minus x 2 okay. minus d a x 1 square equal to 0. Right. So, if I write it in the standard form, I will get d x 1 by d z, d x 2 by d z. This is uh, 0, this is uh, x 2 and this is p e times d a x 1 square plus x 2. This is my differential equation d x by d x 1 by d z and d x 2 by d z. Okay. Now, my first condition is x 2 0 is equal to Okay, x two zero is equal to this. Right? This is my differential equation. This is boundary condition one, this is boundary condition two. Okay. This equation is of the form D x by d z is equal to f of x fine this is ordinary differential equation first order I have so many methods for solving this you know Euler method implicit Euler explicit Euler runge kutta whatever okay I have those methods for solving this but to start solving okay I need two things using initial value problem I need x 1 0 and x 2 0. Okay. I need x 1 0 and x 2 0. I do not have two of them separately. I have one constraint. Okay. Suppose, suppose I decide to choose x 1 0, x 2 0 will get defined. Right? If I decide to choose x 1 0, x 2 0 will get defined. Then I can choose x 1 0 let us say I call this alpha then x 2 0 will become p e alpha minus 1. Okay. This is my guess this is my guess using this guess I get x 2 which is this guess. Okay. Now, what I can do see now this is a differential equation with two initial conditions specified. I can start marching in space now not in time I am marching in space. So, I go from z equal to 0 okay, using say Euler method I start marching from z equal to 0 to z equal to 1. Okay. I start marching from z equal to 0 to z equal to 1 if my guess alpha is correct okay what should happen 
this condition should be satisfied this condition should be satisfied that is x21 should be equal to 0 okay if it is not equal to 0 i can refine my guess okay i can come back and change alpha okay again start marching so i can solve this problem iteratively okay this is called shooting because you know you are trying to hit a bird which is hidden behind uh, a cloud okay so you just shoot you guess and shoot where the bird is okay if it doesn't hit you start again take a new bullet and start so you start shooting you, you guess the missing initial conditions at z equal to 0 start shooting towards a uh, start marching towards z equal to 1 okay if your guess is correct you know the conditions at z equal to 1 will be satisfied this is a way i can use a ode initial value problem solver to solve a boundary value problem okay this is a boundary value problem being solved using repeated repeated use of a initial value problem solver okay i'm going to use again and again uh, say euler method or runge-gutta method to march in space to reach from z equal to 0 to z equal to 1 keep checking this condition now the question is how do i form the iterations can you tell me how will you form the iterations now you have to merge newton's method see you should create a guess from the old guess how will you do it x21 equal to 0 as an equation x21 equal to 0 is actually function of this alpha is function of this alpha okay and so you can actually uh, find the gradient see suppose you choose some alpha 0 so what i am saying is f of alpha is equal to uh, x21 right what is x21 is function of what is your guess initial guess alpha right now you want to reach you want to solve the problem see for the time being do not worry about what is the process of calculating this x21 ok given alpha there is some mechanism by which you calculate x21 say uh, Runge Kutta solver or whatever method that you have chosen you have a way of solving this what is where you want to reach you want to reach f of alpha equal to 0 am I correct you want to reach x21 is equal to 0 this is where you want to reach classic one variable uh, problem a nonlinear problem okay might be a little difficult to get derivatives it is not impossible it is possible to do it I have discussed this in the notes but let us use a simpler approach secant method okay what I can do is I can start with some alpha 0 and alpha 1 okay I can take two guesses alpha 0 alpha 1 how do you get a, give a good guess you have to use your physics knowledge this is a tubular reactor what should be the you know initial value you have to use your uh, understanding of chemical engineering to give two initial guesses now you know using alpha 0 I do calculations I compute f alpha 0 which is whatever x2 value at 1 which you will get this will not be equal to 0 because your guess is not correct if your guess was correct you would have reached the solution okay then there was no problem of getting iterations now this is this this is not equal to 0 okay then you can start with f alpha 1 and you again get x2 so let us call this as uh, let us call this as uh, x2 1 alpha 0 x2 1 alpha 1 okay x2 now i want to create a new guess alpha 2 okay so what i'm going to do now so 
what is alpha 2 this will be alpha 1 minus the derivative the derivative is f alpha 1 minus f alpha 0 upon uh, we have to use derivative inverse actually so uh, f alpha 1 divided by f alpha 1 minus f alpha 0 simple secant method okay so so in general i can i can write that is alpha k plus 1 is alpha k minus f of alpha k what is the f value f is nothing but x1 evaluated uh, sorry x2 evaluated at z equal to 1 okay x2 evaluated at z equal to 1 you want to reach x2 uh, at 1 equal to 0 okay and you generate initial guess like this if you if you uh, if you have a differential equation boundary value problem where uh, you know you do not have only two equations but you have four five six equations it might happen if you have temperature and concentration to be considered together okay then you have more missing initial conditions you can write Wegstein method you can use multivariable secant method you can use you can also use Newton Raphson method so uh, this is just the idea as to how to do uh, solving of boundary value problem using a shooting method where the missing initial conditions are guessed in this case there is only one missing initial condition you guess the missing initial conditions you go to the final point find out a gradient generate a new guess and keep doing this od initial value problem solving till you reach the solution how do you reach this how do you find uh, whether you reach the solution you look at whether f of so basically finally what I want to happen is uh, this mod of x1 uh, x2 at 1 alpha this should be strictly less than epsilon we can specify epsilon to be 10 to the power minus 10 what is 0 it is difficult to say so a small number okay till these two come very very close they are very very small okay uh, one minute this cannot be the condition here because we want to reach x2 not not the gradient not the gradient here I would like to check x2 is equal to 0 okay so this should be less than epsilon I want I want the final value to go to 0 so I cannot say it should goes to exactly equal to 0 I can give a very very small number here and say that this should be close to 0 okay this should be very very close to 0 so if this is very very close to 0 whatever epsilon we specify then you stop the iterations okay till then till this condition is not satisfied you keep guessing alpha okay for every guess of alpha you use a initial value problem id ovp so, uh, od ivp solver to integrate from z equal to 0 to z equal to 1 that is you do one shooting well if you hit the target you stop the iterations if you don't hit the target generate a new guess of alpha and keep doing this so your combined initial value problem solver with the secant method see one thing which I wanted to stress right in the beginning is that there are very few tools that we have and finally you know we have to make a Bhelpuri of uh, a solution is a Bhelpuri 
for a particular problem you have to come up with you know uh, taking this and taking this and then uh, you know mixing the two and creating a creating a recipe so some of the one of the well known books in numerical methods is titled numerical recipes there is a book called numerical recipes in c or numerical recipes in fortran very popular books very nice written books so i think the word recipe when i read it for the first time was intriguing i mean why should somebody call a numerical recipe okay but it's indeed if you if you start looking at it it's a recipe you know you are concocting a solution by using some basic tools basic ideas and you are mixing the two same problem you could have solved uh, by converting into you know algebraic equations but then again for solving the algebraic equations you have to use newton newton's method newton raphson okay here you are not converting them into algebraic equations you are converting them into an initial value problem using initial value problem repeatedly okay and then and then it's a mixture of things see to solve uh, let's say you convert into algebraic equations using uh, orthogonal collocations the same problem okay then to solve it using newton's method you need ax equal to b solver okay so solving ax equal to b or solving an ode ivp these are some basic tools if you have them you can concoct a solution to large class of problems okay you can concoct a recipe for solving many so you have to you have to understand this how these ideas are used to concoct a recipe or a solution that is very very important so next class will have a very brief peek at this differential algebraic systems because in real chemical engineering problems you more often than not encounter differential algebraic systems so let's at least touch upon the tip of the iceberg and then uh, close the show